Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today we are talking about a much anticipated model release in the form of Claude Sonnet 4.5. Now on the one hand, people have been excited about Anthropic releasing their latest Claude 4.5 model in general, but really when push comes to shove, the coding implications of Sonnet 4.5 are what people have been most focused on. Today we're going to talk about the response to that model, an interesting new user experience that came with it, and about how our sense of the autonomy frontier might be fundamentally off as this thing apparently has coded for up to 30 hours completely autonomously. First up though, let's talk about what was announced. No surprise, Anthropic decided to focus the announcement on the coding implications. In fact, in their opening tweet, they call it the best coding model in the world. Now, if you are a regular listener, you'll know that all the way back since 3.5, Claude really has been for most of that time the preferred set of models when it comes to coding use cases. The only exception to that really has been in the last month or so, where GPT-5 and OpenAI's Codex have started to win back market share from the Claude models, both because of the gains of GPT-5, but also because of some issues during August with model performance on Anthropic's side. Sonnet 4.5 is very much Anthropic's attempt to reclaim that crown. They write, it's the strongest model for building complex agents, it's the best model at using computers, and it shows substantial gains on testing of reasoning and math. Benchmarks, as you know, are one of my least favorite ways to understand a new model but the published benchmarks do show some big jumps, especially when it comes to these coding use cases. For example, on Sweet Bench Verified, they're up to 77.2% raw, as opposed to GPT-5 Codex is 74.5%, and all the way up to 82% with what they call parallel test time compute. On the Terminal Bench benchmark for agentic terminal coding, they claim 50%, as opposed to GPT-5's 43.8%, and basically all of the other benchmarks put them in and alongside the Opus 4.1 and GPT-5 class models of the world. The company did also announce a number of upgrades to Claude code itself. The first is the Claude Agent SDK, which basically gives users access to the tools, context management systems, and permissions frameworks that are embedded in Claude code. They've also got an updated terminal interface and a new VS Code extension, so people can work with Claude code in their IDE instead. They also added this little checkpoints feature, which is getting punted aside based on all the other news, but as they put it, lets you instantly undo Claude's latest changes which seems like a super valuable feature for any sort of agentic coding use case. Still, the big show is, of course, this new model, and that's what everyone was focused on. And as tends to happen with a new model, there is some variety in the first impressions. While I didn't see anyone that had an outright bad experience with it, there were certainly some meh type of shoulder shrug experiences. Jeremy Mack writes, Early results for Sonnet 4.5. Code quality not markedly different than 4. CSS is improved. Outputting markdown when not asked. Same price in TPS as always. A Gosu coder writes, First impression of 4.5, keep in mind this is after three hours of head down coding, so still early. One, I don't think I can see a difference versus 4.0. In fact, if you told me this was actually 4.0, I'd believe you. 3.5 and 3.7 were noticeably different. Two, still had to go back to GPT-5 for a few things that Sonnet couldn't figure out. We have definitely hit a wall in coding progress. Now, a lot of people responded that they hadn't had that same experience. Ming, for example, said that he had found that it was better at following instructions and better at parallel tool calling, and others just generally said that they were more impressed. On the other end of the spectrum, you had a lot of posts like this one from Leo Synthwave, who wrote, My verdict on 4.5 Sonnet, very good vibes, very fast. Although at the same time, he also said, Thinking, which is a particular mode of this model, often doesn't seem to yield a significant improvement in output, and I still prefer a codex with GPT-5 codex for agentic use. Tool use seemed to be a thing that Anthropic was focused on. Kiminismus called out this section of the announcement post as related to tool usage. The model more effectively uses parallel tool calls, firing off multiple speculative searches simultaneously during research and reading several files at once to build context faster. Improved coordination across multiple tools and information sources enables the model to effectively leverage a wide range of capabilities in agentic search and coding workflows. Simon Willison did a deep dive, headlined by the statement, I think it may live up to Anthropic's claims of being the best coding model in the world for the next few weeks at least. And in his post, he definitely talked about this enhanced tool usage as one of the big upgrades. Dan Shipper and the team at Every summed up by saying that it was faster than GPT-5 Codex and smarter and more steerable than Opus 4.1. And the big thing that they noted was the speed and the performance for the cost. They said that the new Sonnet 4.5 felt about 50% faster than previous versions of Claude. They also said that it was smarter than Opus and more than anything else, it was 5x cheaper. Dan writes, It's still the same pricing as the old Sonnet 4, so there's basically no reason to use Opus in the API anymore. Sonnet all day. Some other folks noticed benefits in areas other than coding. For example, Bindu Ready wrote, 
So far, definite improvement on coding math and data analysis over Sonnet 4. Ethan Mollick wrote, It's a really good model. I saw especially big jumps in doing finance and statistics, which tend to get overlooked in the focus on coding. And in fact, if you go to Anthropic's announcement post, the focus on finance was one of their big notes. For example, in their published benchmark for financial analysis, Sonnet 4.5 got a 55.3%, compared to, for example, GPT-5's 46.9%. Peter Wilderford wrote, Everyone talking about 4.5 being great at coding, but I'm taking way more notice of that huge increase in computer use score. The jump he's noting is from 44.4% in Opus 4.1 to 61.4% with Sonnet 4.5 on the OS World Test. Peter writes, That's a huge increase over the state of the art, and I don't think we've seen anything similarly good at OS World from others. Claude Agents coming soon? Now, speaking of agents and just production use cases of these models, some of the big agent coding companies instantly started to put this model into production. The factory team, which focuses on agent coding for enterprises, wrote, After testing with Anthropic, we find the strengths of Sonnet 4.5 to be significantly more reliable and accurate file editing, high environmental awareness, snappier than previous models on quick questions, not overthinking simple tasks. Walden from Cognition wrote, When our team tried Sonnet 4.5, we realized it was worth building a whole new version of Devon around it. This model behaves very differently. They actually published an entire blog post about what they changed. They wrote, Because Devon is an agent that plans, executes, and iterates rather than just auto-completing code, we get an unusual window into model capabilities. Each improvement compounds across our feedback loops, giving us a perspective on what's genuinely changed. With Sonnet 4.5, we're seeing the biggest leap since Sonnet 3.6. Planning performance is up 18%, end-to-end eval scores up 12%, and multi-hour sessions are dramatically faster and more reliable. A couple of other notes that they shared. They write, Sonnet 4.5 is the first model we've seen that it is aware of its own context window, and this shapes how it behaves. As it approaches context limits, we've observed it proactively summarizing its progress and becoming more decisive about implementing fixes to close out tasks. Interestingly, they said that this context anxiety, which is their term for it, can actually hurt performance, where they've observed the model taking shortcuts or leaving tasks incomplete because it believed it was near the end of its window, even if it had plenty of room left. Moritz Stefan from Cognition also noted that the model tracks all modified features and doesn't stop until they work. He writes, One particularly impressive moment was when I asked it to build a Datadog clone, and it ran a log emission script in the background while using Devon's browser to test the live event ingestion UI. Now with all that, so far I haven't seen people who had switched over to GPT-5 Codex rushing to get back into the Anthropic sphere. Peter Gostev writes, Hmm, definitely better than Sonnet 4, but not obviously better than GPT-5 thinking high in codex models just now. Victor Talon writes, I really like Claude 4.5 for coding. It's fast, reliable, surgical, high quality in a good way. I think I will use it a lot, especially for style refactors and things like that. But it is nowhere near as smart as GPT-5. I wouldn't leave it alone making large changes on HVM. Yes, it sucks to wait 30 minutes for a codex refactor, but debugging AI-introduced errors takes way more time than that. Peak intelligence is very important. GPT-5 is not nearly as smart as I need, and Sonnet is less smart than that. Eric Provencher had a really interesting way of putting it. He writes, I'm starting to see anthropic models as light reasoning models, while OpenAI models are deep reasoning models. With only light reasoning, Sonnet 4.5 excels at efficient context usage to pinpoint information. Codex tool calls are bulky, and they're interspersed with reasoning tokens to test hypotheses. It craves context to understand more of the problem. The gap between GPT-5 and Sonnet 4.5 becomes apparent when you have a hot context window where no new tool calls are needed. GPT-5 can think for a few minutes on end to find a detailed complete solution, while Sonnet 4.5 is satisfied with a few seconds for a serviceable one. Deep reasoning only works with sufficient context, but allows the model to really evaluate problems so exhaustively that it appears almost superhuman. By contrast, light reasoning stays closer to the service, but serves as breathing room for models to collect their thoughts. It is in many ways much more human. Anthropic is far and away ahead on light reasoning, which is super interesting. I think this is a much more useful diagnostic than a simple better or worse. And once again, comes back to the idea that we live in a world where at least for the moment, the best strategy if you truly want optimal performance is going to be model switching based on different contexts and needs. Now, there are two more things that I think are really worth noting about this launch. The first is Imagine with Claude. In their announcement post, Anthropic called this a bonus research preview. They write, In this experiment, Claude generates software on the fly. No functionality is predetermined, no code is pre-written. What you see is Claude creating in real time, responding and adapting to your request as you interact. It's a fun demonstration of what Claude Sonnet 4.5 can do, a way to see what's possible when you combine a capable model with the right infrastructure. Sean Strong from Anthropic wrote a little bit more about Imagine. 
He said, it pioneers the concept of model as backend, using a model to not only generate interfaces on the fly, but also power all the functionality behind it. An example he gave was a choose-your-own-adventure version of his founder journey. He writes, For the prompt, I asked Claude to generate an interactive choose-your-own-adventure game based on my startup experience. It accurately retold our pivot from VR games to management, even making an interactive management dashboard and app launcher to showcase key functionality. It then had us go through our fundraise, massive growth, and ultimate shutdown due to COVID. Peter Yang asked it to, quote, show me the desktop of a bad PM on the left versus a great PM on the right. Swix from Latent Space and now Cognition validated that 4.5 is a very good coding model in general, but chose to focus on Imagine in his post about it as well. He writes, most generative UI today is no more than glorified tool calling of pre-made components. Imagine with Claude is the first mainstream adoption of the WebSim paradigm that went viral last year, generating entire UIs on the fly that you can immediately use. 4.5 Sonnet enables vibe coding to be so fast and so good that you can conjure up ephemeral apps to explore the latent space of what's possible just in time as you explore it. Now he caveats, it isn't perfect yet. Buttons in dense UIs like simulated email clients often don't work or are slow enough that the illusion is gone. But it's a generation away from replacing the tyranny of designs made for the median person and ushering the age of truly personalized, malleable software. Josh Bickett picks up on that and writes, Claude Imagine could become a new form factor for how we interact with AI. It's completely different than chat. It's like a generative computer that we talk to in a natural language. I'd guess that vision is that everyone gets their own persistent generative computer instance with a Claude code generating the UI, processing data and files under the hood. I'd guess that what's happening is a front end is passing the prompt directly to a Claude code terminal agent, which writes back to the front end. It looks like a beautiful feedback loop. I'm going to put in some reps with Imagine this week before the preview goes away, and we'll certainly share what I discover. Now, the other big thing that people were really jumping onto was the immense time that Sonnet 4.5 is apparently able to work autonomously for. Hayden Field from The Verge wrote about this in her piece about the announcement. She sums up, Anthropic's latest AI model spent 30 hours running by itself to code a chat app akin to Slack or Teams. It spat out about 11,000 lines of code, and it only stopped running when it had completed the task. Now, some tried to figure out how this was possible. Carlos Perez writes, How is it possible that Sonnet 4.5 is able to work for 30 hours to build an app like Slack? The system prompts have been leaked, and Sonnet 4.5 reveals its secret sauce. Some of the ways it accomplishes this, it forces quote-unquote big code into durable artifacts. Anything over about 20 lines is required to be emitted as an artifact, and only one artifact per response. He writes, that gives the model a persistent, append-only surface to build large apps module by module without truncation. He also points out things like it enforcing runtime constraints, governs tool loops, supports long horizon autonomy via planning and feedback loops, and ultimately, whatever the combination of things, if this is really true, it is a total game changer when it comes to the autonomy horizon that we've been working on. When Replit announced Agent 3, they shared that it had reached autonomous agent runs of 200 minutes, and a few days later, OpenAI announced their coding-optimized GPT-5 codex model, where that company said, quote, during testing, we've seen GPT-5 codex work independently for more than seven hours at a time on large, complex tasks, iterating on its implementation, fixing test failures, and ultimately delivering a successful implementation. At the time, which was literally just two weeks ago, people were saying that even that was insane. But now we've got this claim for 30 hours that just obviously blows that out of the water. And one example that Anthropic gave to really sum up and dramatize the progress that has been made in the AI coding space over just the last couple of years is that they asked every previous version of Claude to make a clone of Claude.ai. It wasn't until 3.6 that you even had something that you could try to log into, and it wasn't until Sonnet 4 that there was even a functional clone. Now it was able to build something that actually worked, working autonomously for over five hours to do so. Nick Dobos takes a step back and points out, it's honestly insane how fast these are improving. Sui bench from 33% to 82% in just around a year. Part of the reason that we spend so much time on the coding use cases on this show even though many in this audience, in fact, most of this audience are not software engineers by training, is not only that thanks to these new tools, all of us get to be software developers to some extent or another, it's that coding is so clearly the frontier where we are seeing the biggest changes take place when it comes to model capabilities. Agentic coding improvement is not just a bellwether of where models are, it's also the mechanism by which they get better at everything else as well. I'm going to be keeping a close eye to see if anyone outside of the lab setting gets anywhere close to that 30 hours of performance. But if it's true, it really is a game changer. Rohan Paul went back to a recent Axios interview with Dario Amade, where Dario said, The vast majority of code that is used to support Claude and to design the next Claude is now written by Claude. 
It's just the vast majority of it within Anthropic. And other fast-moving companies, the same is true. Rowan adds, Now it all makes sense. Claude Sonnet 4.5 can keep its coding focus for nonstop 30 hours. The shift has started in all of tech. Now, things move fast in this space. From the first reads, it's not even clear that Sonnet 4.5 is definitively the best coding model compared to GPT-5 Codex. And even the people who think it is are still kind of waiting to see what comes with Gemini 3. But it is yet another moment that shows the relentless pace of change in this space. And I'm excited to see what new opportunities it unlocks. For now, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.